Howdy, lieutenants and economists. The most volatile, evil, disgusting things on the planet, humans. If you have a video request, you can always go to assholeconsulting.com. Yeah, I am gonna charge you, kids. And that is the importance of not fucking up. You are such an asshole! Ah, a topic warm and dear to Cappy's heart because I, I, oh gosh, I mean, they're, they're going the way of the dinosaur now, thankfully, because of technology and outsourcing and economics. I'm, I'm surprised it did, uh, but they, they've reinvented themselves. But uh, in the 90s and the aughts, you kids don't know about this, uh, we had the HR dits. Uh, they're still out there. They're still out there. Um... But it was literally talking to like a Wiccan priestess and she'd have her boiling pot to stew and she would essentially do magic. And you think I'm joking or being facetious, I'm not. Uh, these women had insights. The 23-year-old girl who knew nothing about your background, didn't know anything about market inference pricing, accounting, Economics, financial analysis, tax law. <clears throat> she could tell by the way you wore your shoes and the way you carried yourself. And she, hmm, she was a very wise 23-year-old HR ditz. And even though she knew nothing about you, nothing about the job, they could tell everything about you by asking questions like, what's your favorite animal and why? <gasps> oh, yeah. I mean, literally, tarot card reading bullshit. And if you think I'm joking, you just go back to the 80s. Even in the 90s, I believe, some European companies were doing this where they would do handwriting analysis. Yes, handwriting analysis. These witches, these variable witches would analyze your handwriting. Ooh, that's a strong stroke. He's probably too aggressive for this position and stuff like that. So forget resumes. Forget all that. That, that was a thing. That was real. All right? Uh, I mean, Shock of shock, these gals are also the type to believe in astrology. But we are to, like something as valid as astrology, astrology until 10 years ago carried huge weight in the United States labor market as well as European labor market. <clears throat> now, thankfully, <clears throat> because of technology, resume scanning things, replacing HR people, and I think corporate America finally got its head out of the ass saying, hey, you know what? If we need employees, you know, and they got to be good, uh, maybe the 24-year-old dits who can't do compounded mathematics should be screening for engineers. You know, maybe maybe we should have an engineer. Maybe garbage in, garbage out. So, uh, and then also, by the way, you don't have to pay uh, a ditzy 24-year-old uh, health benefits or 401k match when you just outsource it. What has happened is the world of HR has been essentially one debunked, dethroned, and then also outsourced. And what should have strictly remained part of the legal department of corporate America, where it's like there's employment law, um, you know, do your training and sexual harassment policy. So when Dr Jim asks out Susie for lunch, which is a sin nowadays, uh, and Susie sues the company for $100 billion, you say, whoa, we trained Jim. We did our part. We, hands are clean. Um, that That is now, you know, that that's the legal. And that's where it should have been. We've kind of come full circle now. So thankfully, the day of the HR dits is over or is waning. The sun is setting on that. But they've come back. They've come back reinventing themselves because laziness never sleeps, ladies and gentlemen. Lazy people never sleep being lazy. They're always trying to find a way to be lazy. And I would say hypocritical with a lot of corporate professional women who instead of majoring in HR or engineering are going to go into other, other HR-like things. Because I want to be a professional. I want to make believe. I want to make believe I'm an HR professional. I want to make believe I'm a businesswoman. So let's get to our client's request. I love it. I am passionate. Huh? You like that words, assholes? I'm passionate about this topic. Hey, Cappy, in one of your audiobooks, Bachelor Pad Economics, I believe, you mentioned that HR departments are the biggest affirmative action program ever, or words to that effect. Thankfully, my workplace doesn't have one, but what other departments within companies would you say fall under the aforementioned category? What are the telltale signs that our department is an expensive affirmative action program? Finally, what can we do to, what can we just, 
Can we just do away with HR departments completely simply by having an employment attorney or retainer? I would, you would think so. Asking just out of curiosity, please keep me in Oz. All right, <clears throat> keep in mind, starting in the 90s even, I don't know why HR was such a big deal in the, in the 80s, and the, but starting in the 90s, oh God, we're not sexist, not us, we're not. Look at all the women we have. Oh my God, what do we do? Bob, there's not enough female engineers or accountants. They made you worth the shit. I know, Jim, but what, we gotta get women in here. I know, let's throw them into HR, you know? Throw them into personnel. That's essentially secretarial work and nothing bad will happen. <laughs> and so what corporations did is to bolster their numbers in the ranks of female employees to make it look like they weren't sexist and they were from, you know, work, work, really work, marketing is all it was. Uh, they threw a bunch of women into HR. <clears throat> um, Little did they really, uh, they'll do the least amount of damage there. No, they just made sure no talent ever got through. And their bodies and the girlfriends of the BFF got in. Uh, so you're asking, uh, I'm taking your questions out of order, but in a logic differently to answer them all. Uh, finally, can we just do away with HR departments completely simply by having an employment attorney or retainer? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. And they are. Not necessarily just having, a, you'd have a legal department, whereas all the employment law would have. Um, and you can have a retainer. But there are two basic ways corporations are now dealing with it. They realize that HR is bullshit. It's not, it offers no value to, to, to their uh, the corporate <coughs> uh, entity at all. Um, they found other ways to employ women in an affirmative action way to bolster their numbers. Uh, so what they have done, the trend now, is to outsource it to an HR profession. Or you have like one HR person, eh, male or female, doesn't matter, disproportionately women. Uh, and, and there is a role. It's like the difference between a department and a bureau, okay? You didn't need a full-blown department. You didn't need uh, a, a queen witch on, on top of the HR department and then a score of sub-witches underneath her who are all under the, in their 20s asking guys stupid questions about the favorite color of their favorite animal and why. You didn't need that. You do need, though, you do need, because there is employment law, there are hiring practices, you do want to recruit talent, there is the need for a bureau, not a department, but a bureau, a scale down an HR person, for the most part, an HR person, and then you outsource the mundane tasks of <clears throat> employment verification, um, W-2s, 1099s, all that stuff, which has to be done. You outsource that to an HR uh, third-party company. You outsource that to an employment company, right? You outsource payroll to ADP or whatever. You outsource HR to people who are good at HR, but you don't need an HR department. You do not need a, a, a legion of of. Uh, uh, 20 something ditzes who know nothing about anything being your front line of recruitment at Tit for Defense. <laughs> so <clears throat> that is, yes. So finally, they have you, they, you can and they have. And I think uh, a good HR professional, which there are some, is really a specialist in employment law. That's really where it is. And then knowing them. But, but for the most part, that HR function can be outsourced. And then you got recruiters. They'll go recruit and do just as good a job. Um, they're, the, in this then, and that's the trend. You know, you can focus on your core competencies. We don't have to play affirmative action in charity and create an entire department to employ a bunch of idiotic, moronic people just because they have a vagina. And they're witchcraft brew, handwriting analysis, asking people about animals, cauldron studies. So that's good. All right, but you push down here, it goes over here. Uh, thankfully, my workplace doesn't have one, but what are other departments within companies would you say fall under the aforementioned category? And that this is where lazy people, predominantly women, but not always, have reinvented themselves. So now, and this is the, this is the new industry, this is the new industry, the growing, booming industry, uh, it is any, things that are like HR but they're not in name. Where you ask and it says, does this have anything to do with the core competency of the company? And what you're gonna find is this is squarely on Gen X, squarely on Gen X. What is the tail wagging the dog? Where it's, well, we decided we're gonna major in this and then we're gonna go work for the company. And the company is actually getting wagged by people's decisions to major in stupid bullshit. An entire generation of people, Gen X, who are now leading corporate America are getting there, or at least in middle management, uh, 
there's so many people that majored in bullshit that now corporate America almost has to bend to that will or that fact. And now for affirmative action reasons as well, but another predominant one that I'm going to explain later, uh, have created entirely new HR-like departments that don't serve the core competency of the company, offer no value, consume resources, and once again is largely used as a way to employ affirmative action and, and, and boost their affirmative action numbers. The most obvious of one, the most prominent one, is they were pushing this down in the 90s, uh, is Corporate Social Responsibility, CSR. All right. Uh, this is where, you know, again, my generation was brainwashed. Your generation was brainwashed. The Gen Zers are almost done with their brainwashing. And whatever we're going to call the little shit sewer in kindergarten right now, whatever that, they are being brainwashed right now to believe that humans are going to destroy the planet. That's that's one of the main religions being instituted by the government right now. And the you, you can't even call school school anymore. It's really more like a church. It's more like, almost like a cult of socialism. And so you, me, future Germany are all going to come out. Oh my God, save the earth. It's threatened. It's damaging. And I, you know what? No, the, the earth is not, doesn't need saving. There's no threat. It's all you've been lied to. You have been lied to. But, but, trillions of dollars over decades has been invested in convincing you people that the sky is falling. The world's about to blow up. Oh my God, Al Gore with his big ass mansion or where his heat bill is more than my mortgage ever was. <laughs> True. Uh, oh my God, you gotta destroy the planet. And so corporations have capitalized on this knowing that for the most part, Americans and Europeans, Westerners in general, are worthless, valueless pieces of shit that have no value, have no core, they don't wanna work. But they wanna feel good like we're environment. They're slacktivists, they're armchair slacktivists. They wanna feel good, oh my God, I care about the environment, I care about the world, oh, I'm such a good person, I'm such a good person. So they say, oh, look how good we are. And you see it, oh my God, you see it. Farm to table, we're organic, we're corporate social resources, we have our carbon footprint, even fucking Exxon. Oh my God, I wrote a letter, yeah, an open letter, of course. Rex Tillerson, who was then the CEO of Exxon. I'm like, knock it off with your fucking corporate social resources. British Patron, corporate social resources, what we're doing for the environment. No one cares. They want an enemy. They hate your guts. The people have been brainwashed to have this as the religion. It's not based in reality. It's not based in logic. It's not based in reason. So being reasonable and logical, saying, well, you know, our engineers are really trying to cut down. They don't care. They want an enemy. They want to feel good. They want to do this all day long about their environmentalism credentials. Corporations picked up on this. And so what they did for purely marketing purposes is they set up corporate social responsibility departments. And look at how wonderful we are. And we're doing this. And we're trying to save the environment. And we washed the oil off of the little ducks when there was that oil spill. And, da, 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 da. and you feel, oh my God, oh my God. Yeah, I can't wait. Ah, 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 ah. I can't wait to go buy an apple because they told me they're doing things wonderful around the world. Forget strip mining in China. Forget the labor laws. But they're just such good people because they said they are. So corporate social response, you know, at least marketing is honest. Yeah, we want your money. We're going to tell you and basically lie to you about our product. And here's a girl with big tits. So you give us your money. Right? That's it. That's marketing's got at least some honesty there. Corporate social responsibility, no, because it's based on a lie. So corporate social responsibility, that's like HR version 2.0. That's just the next evolution. And who goes work for corporate social responsibility? A bunch of ditzes who can't do math, never want to work a real job in their real life, don't want to program, don't want to do accounting. But by God, do they love power and do they love moralizing and lecturing people about I just said And so it's organic and fair trade and free trade. And we look out for child labor. Da, 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 da. And I'm not even necessarily against those things if that's what you were really doing. But it's not. It's like most charities. Hey, look at the kids. Give us money. And, you know, you gave us a million dollars. So little Jimmy who has cancer gets $7.36. We get nine hundred ninety-nine thousand nine hundred ninety-eight dollars for ourselves. To, uh, management fees. Yeah, management fees. Corporations are the same thing. I bet you, you look at the, we're organic. We have this coffee that's the wonderful bullshit. I bet you they're, they, they, they're getting it somewhere else. They just tell you it's organic and you you dopes, you sheep buy it. All right. So that is kind of a quasi replacement, different function. It's marketing. That's what it is. It's marketing. You could say HR in the olden days was government compliance. Like, oh, yeah, we got to show, oh, look, all the, oh, look at all the boobs we hired. Yeah, see, we're not sexist. Don't, don't sue us. 
Now it's marketing. I think it's uh, deceitful marketing. Uh, but you people believe it, so you know. So so we have that. So uh, that disproportionately hires women, and so you can. I think could I bet you if I looked, I don't even have to look it up. I don't even have to look it up. I bet you can. You know what? Let's look it up. Do I want to? Oh God, I'm I'm wincing. I bet you can get a master's degree in masters in CSR. Yep, expertise and masters in, in uh, masters in social responsibility and organization and human resources. Masters in fundraising and sustainable development, corporate responsibility. Yeah, you can get okay. So, so the scam continues. Academia is already on it. <clears throat> All right, now another one. Um, originating from the same propaganda from the Church of Socialism that the government installed in all of us. Another main tenet or belief for sub-religion is diversity. Uh, that the color of your skin is more important than the content of your character, not to mention the plumbing downstairs, what you believe you're plumbing to be downstairs. That's more important than what you actually fucking do. This, again, is very popular among the weak sheep because, again, people are lazy. They don't want to work hard. They want to think they just have value because of the way they were born. And so uh, this is trillions of dollars once again invested in how important diversity is and oh you gotta like minority da, 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 da. and so you will have a department of diversity and inclusion closely related to HR employment all right but uh, is it really because you want to help out minorities and women get jobs or is it you just showing what a good corporation you are a, a, a somewhat variant of that is Target look at Target Corporation. They employ fat, ugly models. Are they doing that really because they care about women and fat acceptance? Or is it like, yeah, most of the women, <laughs> or is there a very savvy marketing person? They're like, yeah, most of the women are fat fucking sows. They can't put down a fucking bonbons and they need big clothes. So we're going to market to them. Nike, very similar with what they did with uh, Colin Caperman. Nike was a dead brand. Nobody... It's nowhere near as popular as it was with the youth back in the day with Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls and all that. So to get cool and hip with the kids, and the kids, once again, we got to go back to where indoctrination and brainwashing the religion of socialism is instilled. Hey, are you a young millennial loser? Are you a young Gen X loser? Hey, who our new spokesperson is? A loser. Got kicked out of the NFL. Nobody really wanted to hire him. Look, Colin Kaepernick, he's a loser like you. Buy our shit. And they did Cause I'm done with the cause, man, and we're oppressed, and all that other fucking bull. Again, propagandize. Corporations are merely taking an infrastructure that's been built in the form of a national religion of socialism and oppression and diversity <clears throat> and victimhood politics. And so they say, oh, yeah, we're going to capitalize on that. Look, the government spent all the money advertising and, and, and prepping people's brains for this. All we got to do is deliver it. The government brainwashed people to say, I want this on the menu. And now the corporation said, okay, we'll give you that. You want to feel bad? You want self-pity? Here's all the self-pity in the world, bitches. Yeah, oh, we got plus-size model. Big is beautiful. Yeah, whatever you want. Give us your fucking money. Yep, yep, you go. You don't need no husband. You don't need to work hard. No, you're oppressed. Yeah, give us your money. Yeah, spend our money here. Yeah, you don't want it. Yeah, you're right. Everything's somebody else's fault, and it's because of skin color and gender and race and what everybody believes. Yeah, just give me your vote. Give me your fucking money, and we'll take care of it because we're the Democrat Party. So, politics get in on this too. Anyway, the point is, you can, and you, I've seen, you can get master's degrees in diversity and inclusion, and every corporate uh, Gen X cocksucker is lining up for this. They just, <gasps> diversity and inclusion, <laughs> like, fuck competence or accomplishment or the content of that guy's character. No, he's got the right color skin, because that's how I judge my friends, is what color skin you got. That's it. Okay, you're my friend now. Fuck whether you're a dickhead or not. So, uh, for marketing purposes, they now have diversity and inclusion. But again, you got they're living a lie. And, and you, you also got to realize that, look, when you're a lazy person, when you're, when you're a, a, a proto HR gal, you got nothing in your life. So, you got to make believe that you're doing something of value. So, a lot of these people believe it. Like the HR gals, they actually thought it was a professional thing. The two teacher ladies I had to sit next to listen to. Uh, the Older Brother Podcast, episode 27. I'm listening to these two gals talk nonstop about, I think it was a coloring book that they were going to use 
for uh, their elementary school kids, and they're talking about, well, we'll have a meeting about this, and I'm like, give the kids a fucking coloring book and a crayon. There you go. This is not, this is not a strategy. There's nothing here. Education is not a field. It's not a discipline. It's, it's not, but you can get a doctor in it. And this makes worthless people feel professional because then I go, oh, I have a master's. You know how women cannot stop men? That women don't even masturbate to Hugh Jackman as much as they masturbate to their education. Worthless degrees. I have a master's degree. I have a master's degree. I have a master's degree. Oh, I have a doctorate. I have a doctorate. I have a doctorate. <laughs> what? Bullshit? So it's not like they actually have a real job or a real degree or a real education, but they love the the pomp and circumstance. They love imagining it. You know, it's it's like it's like the Nobel Peace Prize. That thing means nothing now, but people love it. The the uh, the movie awards. What is it? What the hell is the movie awards? The Oscars, even Miss America, no longer means anything. It doesn't mean it's accomplishment. It's just, but they got to get it because what? This trophy means nothing. The Nobel Peace Prize means nothing. But these people, they want that false celebration. They want the, the trinket without putting in the work, which to me and anyone who's saying would say, well, then the trinket has no value. Why would you want the trinket? It's going through. You know, why do... Uh, Boy, I'm forgetting words today. Lance Armstrong. Why did him and the American racing team shoot up steroids? Why does any professional athlete shoot up steroids? That would, that would, to, to, or why did uh, somebody take the pipe and beat Nancy Kerrigan's leg in to win the gold? The gold means nothing if you're not the best because deep down inside, you're no, you know you're not the best. So if you have to cheat to get it, then, but there's this human addiction not just female, male too, obviously with professional athletes doping up, <clears throat> to go through a quote, be the best, but not actually be the best. To have the world say you're the best, but you, deep down inside you know you're not the best. So it's this hypocrisy, and that's, once again, when you go into diversity and people who major in diversity and inclusion. There's nothing of substance there. You have a master's degree of diversity and inclusion. That's, that's worthless. I mean... My, my little buffalo here, Sergeant Rumpy Fluffalo, he has more value. I'm not joking. This, this buffalo, this stuffed animal, has more value than any and all diversity and inclusion degrees combined because it's based on bullshit. This is, like, cute. You know, I had this here. Got girls with it. Oh, it's the cutest little thing. I'm like, yeah, Sergeant Rumpy Fluffalo. He rides on my motorcycle. He's a conversation piece. He's a very, very good <clears throat> sergeant. Uh... That actually has serves a function and a purpose. Diversity and inclusion, it is masturbation. It is intellectual. I can't even call it intellectual. Fake, because it's not intelligent. Let alone getting a six-year degree in it. So you have people going through the motions because they want to have that feeling, that lie that they're successful, but they're not. And the product they sell is nothing more than marketing. That's all it is. In the end, I guarantee there's a smart guy or a smart gal there saying, hey, look at the trillions of dollars the government has invested, not only in brainwashing people to think that diversity has value and inclusion has value and the color of your skin is more important than the content of your character, but we got dipshits to major in this worthless crap for six to eight years. They've gone $200,000 in. Man, are they true believers? Let's line them up. They actually think there's a cause, and my God, you want to talk about spinning hamster wheel, going nowhere. Could you imagine sitting in on a diversity and inclusion meeting at a corporation? Instead of just the guy like me coming, yeah, you know what? Shut the fuck up. You're all worthless. You all have worthless degrees. You're only affirmative action hires. And the only reason we have a diversity and inclusion department is so we can market to all the idiots and the sheep who swallowed hold the indoctrination K through college. Now shut the fuck up. Go twiddle your thumbs. I don't care what you do. Matter of fact, here's some brooms. Why don't you do something useful around here? Go sweep. That's, that would be, but then this is why Cappy doesn't work in corporate America. Larger point, diversity and inclusion is another one of these, you know, HR version 2.0, where, again, it's, it, it is serving a function of HR, uh, an affirmative action hiring to meet quotas. But then it is also virtue signaling. It's corporate virtue signaling, which is nothing more than deceitful marketing. That's all it is. Okay, so that's another thing that you don't want to uh, deal with. Um, let me get back to my notes. 
<clears throat> uh, so we did CSR, diversity and include, uh, inclusion. Um, corporate culture. The Department of Corporate Culture. Some of the new, hip, cool, big tech, you know, the millennials are cool, man. We have a Department of Corporate Culture. Um, and this again, bullshit department, make work government, no, not government, make work hires, uh, make work jobs. <clears throat> but what's really scary of this is, again, it's the tail wagging the dog. There is no need for HR. There functionally is no need for diversity and inclusion. There is no need for CSR. I would literally, if I was an accountant, a CFO, I'd say, no, we're throwing that in marketing, and there's a division or a bureau within the marketing department called CSR and diversity and inclusion. But let's, let's, let's categorize those expenses correctly, all right? Um, corporate culture is one of those things, but it again shows you that so many Gen Xers majored in stupid, business crap uh, that they think that work is life. They think that you have the right, they have the right to instill some kind of culture. They've lost the grand scheme of why a company exists and that is to make money. It's not all about the money. Yes, yes, it quite literally is because if it's not about the money, no investors would invest and would be a company in the first place. I know that is the hard reality, but corporations don't just form so that they can employ Tanner and Madison to be uh, uh, corporate uh, culture, CSR, diversity, and inclusion fuck-around gangs, right? And if there isn't profit, that means you run out of money and then you're not paid. So unfortunately, no matter what they tell themselves, it's for the fucking money. <clears throat> but, but, being again, K through college, Gen X and now millennials, they actually think there's more to it than that. And they've also been wonderfully brainwashed. Bravo leftists, bravo, le outstanding job, especially feminists. They've actually convinced, I'd say, you could even maybe throw in some of the baby boomer women there. They, they, they actually convinced three full generations that life is work. I, I can't believe, I mean, you, they actually make you all believe, especially women, that the only thing that matters is your career and what you do for work. Where, I don't know if you knew this, but work sucks because it's not freedom. It's the opposite of freedom. <clears throat> so with that indoctrination and brainwashing, uh, you throw women into this, predominantly, some men follow, but we're talking about women in HR. Uh, just like women have to organize the household, there's still women, guys. I don't care what they say. I don't care what feminism says. I'm going to go with two million years of human evolution. That's what determines who you are. And so women then have to organize. We have to have... Who's organizing the parties? You know, who's... We're going to have this. We're going to have this. We're going to have a corporate culture. And you look at it. Every once in a while, there might be a guy who's the corporate culture head. But usually, nine out of ten times, it's going to be the women. And what are they doing? They're organizing parties. They're doing this. We're going to have functions. Let's go to this corporate retreat. Fuck you. Uh, I'm here to make money and then go to fuck home. My goal as an employee is to extract as much money out of you with the least amount of time I give you back in return. And that should be every employment relationship. And if you would like more, you will pay me more. If the economy is bad, I will lower that wage and give you more time. <clears throat> but it is very clear, very obvious, that K through college has brainwashed certainly Gen X and definitely you millennials to think that your family, all that matters is your job and your career. And so instead of you going out and having fun in the real world, making friends, it's all in-house. And now we have corporate culture. And what's especially Orwelling about this is it's not like you can just go have fun. I mean, if it was a corporate culture, you want this to be the new family, then you'd allow people to date. Bobby would go hit on Amy, which I know this may shock you. In the olden days, sometimes you'd meet your wife or your husband at work, and it happened. And she didn't sue you or claim it was a sexual harassment case. Uh, but now it's not only, <clears throat> hey, here's your new family, you know, after work, let's all go get beers. We're going to have this. We're going to have meetings. We're going to have a guest speak. We're going to we, 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 we. Uh, it's also... Facebook is a per where was it? Hang on, I got the book right here. I got the book right here. I gotta read this. Um, where was it? Uh, the Pence Principle. Short book, but I'm 
very well written. A friend of mine wrote it, helped him out with it, uh, but it came out better than I thought. Uh, you know what? I'm not going to find it. He talks about <clears throat> uh, Facebook when one of their, their global reputation department head, this guy was a friend of the Kavanaugh family during the Kavanaugh hearings, and he sat, he was in the back and attended the hearings. And the corporate culture at Facebook was, oh my God, uh, did you see what he did? Da, da, da. So all this corporate culture was, hey, you're part of this corporate culture. Family, corporate culture. I mean, it's a fucking cult is what I'm saying. Because now your personal life is their life too. What are you doing outside? Brendan Eich, another perfect example. Did you donate money to a political cause that we at Mozilla disagreed with? How dare you? And so corporate culture, you know, it's 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 pointless. It's none of your fucking business. Why do we need a corporate culture? This is a job. I come here and then I go home. And then this attempt to uh, make your life, the company, your entire life, both in and out of work, and saying they have the right to intervene. And, and oh, what are you doing? Oh, we don't like that. That's our corporate culture. Fucking Orwellian tyrants. Fucking Orwellian, Orwellian tyrants. Uh, and that's where, if you see corporate, and that's, that's dangerous. That's dangerous. There should be no corporate culture. The corporate culture is I hate my boss. My boss hates me. Nobody likes anybody else, but we're forced to be here to work and make some money. That's it. So when you see corporate culture, that's another kind of scary thing. Then, then it, it, I try to find the article, but there, there was an article written a couple of years ago about all the weird, dumbass titles uh, that a lot of tech companies, though not solely relegated to them, were coming up with. But there was like talent, the Department of Equality, Salesforce came up with that one. Anything that sounds Orwellian and has nothing to do with the core competencies of the company, you can just assume that's an HR-esque type of department where I wouldn't even say it's for um, affirmative action now. I would say it's largely for corporate virtue signaling, i.e. deceitful marketing. I say that those departments, that's their primary goal. And then a, a secondary, though no less important role, was to bolster the ranks of hiring uh, uh, women and minorities. And so, I mean, Forbes had some gal who actually has her doctorate in diversity included. She's writing an article. I, forget. I think it was something like, why white men shouldn't be afraid of diversity inclusion. I'm like, lady, go fuck yourself. Just go fuck your worthless, lazy self. Um, so anything that is political in nature or Wellingen in nature and is not directly tied to, do we make more widgets at a lower price and higher quality so we can charge more and make more profit and get more clients? No, get it the fuck out of here. Get it the fuck out of here, right? And that is where you will find your lazy, untalented, over-credentialized, worthless hacks and affirmative action. This is not to say women and minorities are worthless. It's not it. You will go find uh, women and minorities in the engineering department and the accounting department. I'm saying if you work in diversity, inclusion, HR, CSR, you are a worthless fuck, regardless of your race, regardless. But corporations, secondarily, will also use that here. Go tell the world what great open-minded people we are. And tell them about how we're all organically certified and all of that stuff. So that, those are your titles. And then I'm sure with the creativity of the millennials, they will come up with different and new titles. I'm sure people down below can list the weird-ass department heads and departments they've heard that have nothing to do, nothing to do with the profitability and success of the firm. Um, what are the departments? Where Telltale Signs the department has an expensive affirmative action project? Well, if, 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 if that department exists, if it's not a core competency of the company, then that likely is an affirmative action or an ulterior motivated uh, uh, department. <clears throat> uh, like CSR, it could be HR. Or, I'm sorry, it could be affirmative action. It could be. Uh, but again, today, the, the new thing is to do virtue signaling, to capitalize on the infrastructure that's been laid down by the government to make everyone believe in socialism and diversity and uh, environmentalism and feminism and all that. Um, so if it's not, it's, I mean, there's only a handful of departments, legal, accounting, operations, finance, 
I, I would even say management is not a thing. I would. I, I'm skeptical. I think that's too much fat. That's too much bloat. I mean, those are those are your those are your core kind. You know, what does a plane need? Wings, engine, cockpit, landing gear. <laughs> oh, but we have a. We have singers on the plane. What the fuck do we need singers for? I shut the fuck. I get the fucking singers. I mean, it, it, there really isn't much company needs. Um, so if it goes beyond that, it's very s suspect that it's being used for some at least ulterior. It's guaranteed, guaranteed, is being used for an ulterior motive. Corporate social or corporate um, virtue signaling, marketing, whatever propaganda we would call it. Uh, but then, yeah, there's a pretty good chance it's also being used as an affirmative action project. Finally, can we just do away with... Yeah, we did. Ask Yon Carey, please give me an honest. I will. Anyway, so yeah. Um, that That's what it is. This is why I love asshole consulting. I could give the finger to all you lying frauds out there and all you, you jokes of human beings who actually think you have value because you have a doctor in HR or diversity and inclusion. Or, I mean... Styrofoam puppy studies. Good Lord, what a joke. What a joke. And I am more than happy to point out the emperor has no clothes. Uh, now, keep in mind, though, you know, it, it is a wise strategy. Uh, because if the government was going to invest those trillions of dollars over decades brainwashing people to have an established, ordained state religion... And they're going to part with their money because you showed a fat chick in a bikini. Oh, we're fat positive. Or you said, look, here's some minority people that we hire. Not really, but you'll believe it because we put them on our marketing. Or, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. We're uh, we're certified by the Organic or International Farm to Table No Child Labor Organization.org. Right, Bob? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I just set up the URL right now. I mean, yeah. We're certified by those guys. Yeah, they're totally legit, man. Totally legit. Give us your money. Um, so I could see, you know, where corporations are just just adapting to the environment and what the government, you know. Do, do corporations use the, the interstate system? The U.S. highway system? Did, do corporations use that? Did they, did they put their trucks and move their shit around? Well, guess what? You laid down a national state religion of socialism, feminism, and environmentalism. Corporations are using that infrastructure, too. So don't be surprised, but don't, don't tell me, don't tell me, oh, we just care so much about the minorities and the women. So, oh my God, we care so much about the children. So shut the fuck up, shut the fuck up. And at the same time, I have to applaud them because you thoroughly convince people, I have organic coffee. I have, I have farm to table. Every fucking restaurant in, in Minneapolis, farm to table. You know what? I don't want farm to table. I want processed fucking McDonald's burgers. That's what I fucking want. Made by child slave labor in India, which doesn't make any sense, but you know what I'm saying. All right, that's it. Questions, answers, assholeconsulting.com. We'll see you all there. Toodles.